Our third topic we're going to talk about briefly today is project regeneration. Uh, project regeneration is something that began around 2013, uh, and it was a way that the foundation responded to the increased need of churches dealing with property transactions. Uh, churches at that time were merging or having some property issues, selling something, uh, and needed assistance. Uh, and so we uh, began to get into the work of how can we be helpful in that conversation? How can we guide uh, congregations, things to think about uh, when they're looking at selling some property? Well, that work continued, but we began noticing around 18, 19 or so that it was a little bit bigger than just a transactional perspective. Churches weren't always just calling saying, yes, I need to sell the acre next door to me. They were calling more with, we don't know really what to do at all. And it might involve selling, but truthfully, it may not. We're really confused. Uh, our, our membership has changed. And we're not exactly sure if our property is now meeting where we are currently in ministry. And so from that conversation, from that shift in that work, we came up with kind of a 2.0 model where it definitely does some of the same stuff, but it's heavily based in discerning and helping our congregations discern where is God leading you at that time. It's a very spiritual based program. Yes, we will give you assistance with matters of property, but we strongly encourage you to just answer that question. Where is God leading you right now today? I wish we could tell you. We don't know the answer to that half the time, right? We're leading you through a discernment base. It's not uh, designed for the foundation to come and tell you what to do. But that's not how this works. It is designed for us to walk with you. Uh, we use a variety of resources. Uh, and we walk with you through that process to help you discern where is God leading you. Some of those things, for one, uh, we ask you to pray. Uh, it may sound like, of course, our churches are doing that, but we're not so sure. And so we really encourage our congregations to engage in consistent prayer for the congregation. Uh, so much so that we use John Gray's book, Sailboat Church, as a component of this program. And if you're familiar with that book, you know that it ends with 40 days of prayer at the end. And so we encourage our members to engage in 40 days of prayer concerning the future ministry of that church. And then we come after those 40 days and just engage in a talk. What did you hear? What did you hear individually? What did you hear as a body of leaders? And how is that answer or those answers helping you shape and determine the future direction of the church. I would love to tell you that after that meeting, everything is clear and solved. Well, of course, that's not always what happens. Uh, but what generally happens is we start shaping some, uh, some things that we have found through our experiences, uh, what churches in similar uh, positions have found themselves. And we'll give examples. I don't start off with those examples, because if I do, churches will make it a multiple choice test and say, we want to be just like First Church on the Hill. And so we try to guide you into saying, what are you feeling called to do? And as we start hearing that call, we will help them with some things to look at, places to call, uh, presbytery contacts to involve, et cetera, et cetera. It definitely requires analytical data. Uh, we give uh, some basis of that. Uh, we have two reports that we will give you a giving analysis and a financial analysis that will look at giving trends over the years. It'll look at your demographics. In other words, are you too uh, overly dependent upon a certain age group of your church? And if so, we'll point that out. Uh, do you have a high number of folks that aren't giving anything? And if so, we'll point that out. Other things will come up in the analytical data that we provide. Uh, we will compare statistically uh, trends of churches that are of similar size. And so if your membership is, say, 150, we'll give you churches five below and five up that are around 150, 151, 148, et cetera, et cetera, just so you'll get an idea of how they look using the statistical information uh, from the denomination to give those comparative studies. You will see here that the minister relations officer, which again is my role, 
uh, will guide through that process, but we certainly will bring in other colleagues as needed as we're going through this process. Uh, we are located strategically all around the denomination. And so the goal is to have a mixture of in-person and virtual meetings uh, for this program. Uh, because if you're within our territory, it shouldn't be terribly difficult to get to you. Uh, so we work, of course, with the church in that scheduling and try our best to make that happen.